But I do think there should be a um, leader. I, I do believe in voting for representatives to debate, to be communicators of ideas to us. But the, you, here's, here, let me start to interrupt you, but you, can, you, could, you could have those two things. For example, wouldn't this be an improvement if they have that now? You have a referendum. Do you want the tax rate to be 30 or 40, whatever percent? Yeah. You have the guy leading the campaign for 50, yeah. fight for 50. Then you have the lady leading the campaign for 40, fight for 40. They'll go out there. They can have debates. They mm -hmm. can talk about the issue, but you're still not voting for one of them. You're voting for yeah. the issue. That makes much more sense to me than I'm going to vote for him and hope that he puts forward 50 and that depends on 99 other senators. Right, exactly. And but, but also, I mean, I do like the idea of voting for certain people to debate certain ideas. Yes. Right. I think that's that's a major improvement. But the final vote should be based on the idea. So okay, so we agree that would be nice to have. Plus, no wars, and then then uh, you'll stop tweeting so uh, aggressively. And to decriminalize things that don't hurt people, drugs, victimless crimes, drugs, especially prostitution, is a big one. If there's and this is me talking, Mister Mister, all cops are criminals. There is no one, or or maybe other than like abused children, who needs access to the police other than sex workers. Yeah. They're the ones who are the most likely to really put themselves in dangerous situation. So they need to be able to call security because that's why they have pimps. Because it, you're a woman dealing with some strange dudes who are uh, a lot of the time going to have weird kinks. You want to be able to be sure, even if you don't approve of prostitution, think it's horrible, that she's not going to be raped and murdered and have no consequences. And if you're going to say, oh, well, she's a prostitute, she can't be raped. Yeah. I uh, Just think for a second, if you're agreeing to sleep with somebody and then he starts choking you and beating the crap out of you and saying it's now it's a dom situation, that is clearly a, a beyond the pale assault. And the same thing with drugs, yes. uh, heroin, cocaine, you uh, crack, you... Um... The people that need help the most are the ones who are addicted to those drugs. But and, even the and, ones and putting... who need punishment, let's suppose you think drug dealers should be in jail, right? It is very hard for me to say that a, someone who sells uh, cocaine should be treated or in the same building as someone who rapes children or is yeah. a murderer. These are not similar types of evil, even if you believe that that drug dealer is an evil person. Yeah, I have... Um... I mean, I, there's an essay in there called uh, by Alexander Berkman, who's Ale mm -hmm. uh, Emma Goldman's partner in crime on crime on prisons and crime, and uh, this is leftism at its best, forgetting the person is forgotten, and the fact that we have the world's largest prison population, the fact that so many people are just like, oh, you commit a crime, just put them in jail, throw away the key. At the very least, if you want to be totally immoral about it, it's expensive. And second of all, the, the concept that all criminals should be locked in a room together in these kind of largely inhuman conditions, and that's going to help people. I don't think that that's the ideal mechanism. Yeah, I, I tend to believe, I usually don't speak so negatively about politicians, but I, I do think that politicians have done more evil in the war on drugs than did the people that are supposed to be the criminals in this picture. And I'll give you one, another example of how this is the anarchist critique of power. Hunter Biden, and I'm not gonna, I'm not making fun of him, I'm not taking shots at him. He had an article in uh, The New Yorker where he talks about when he was in LA, he was buying crack and there was a misunderstanding or like he left the crack pipe in the Hertz car and then blah, blah, there's an issue. He's admitting to a felony in writing to a reporter. And I'm sure this was within the statute of limitations. There was no possibility he was gonna have consequences. Kamala Harris, who was a cop, talked about when she was in college, she was smoking weed. And it's like, I don't begrudge you guys smoking your crack or smoking your weed, but for other people who are poor or maybe just had the short end of the stick, this is years of their life being yeah. uh, destroyed. At the very least, even an arrest is a traumatic situation. Yeah. If you have a weed or cocaine or crack, you're arrested. That's really going to screw up. It's going to do a number on you being locked up. So to have that double standard to me is completely unacceptable. And that has nothing to do with a Republican or Democrat. George W. Bush was a, a, a cokehead back in the day. He talks about overcoming his addiction. And I'm glad that he did. More power to him. But just to have this kind of, you know, it's just really kind of um, disturbing to me. And this is my anarchist brain, like how prevalent drug use is in college. There's that, I think it was a joke on South Park, like there's a time and a place to try drugs and that's called college where people experiment. But all those college kids, which are be gonna become next generation's elite, don't really have that worry that if they get caught, then anything's gonna happen to them. But that kid in the street uh, who did not have that good upbringing, even if he's a piece of crap, like he's not gonna have a different punishment. I, I, I think that's just really at, at its base on American.